Okay, ladies and gents, quick question. Who remembers Adventure Quest? No, not King's Quest, not Costume Quest, not Puzzle Quest, f***ing Adventure Quest. This game used to be what everyone talked about during recess, what all the kids were raving about during lunch, what all the office workers at the water cooler were discussing. It's what I was playing during school in the computer lab, and obviously getting in trouble sometimes. This game, like many others during my middle school days, hogged my weekends. If you aren't familiar with what Adventure Quest is, it was one of the first major Flash RPG games out there. However, unlike other Flash games you could play at the time, Adventure Quest took an approach, much like Gaia Online and Neopets, by having an online social aspect to its gameplay. Adventure Quest was never really an MMORPG back in the day, but it had things like online rankings, social community boards, indirect PvP with other players, and a slew of other features, and it could all be played right in their convenient browser-based Flash client that you could play right from their website, with the most important thing being that it was incredibly fun to play. Adventure Quest originally debuted all the way back in October 2002, but over its lifespan, the creator, Artix Entertainment, has had several successor projects with varying levels of success. One of those successors is today's video topic, Adventure Quest 3D. The original Adventure Quest's natural evolution into a proper MMORPG in a full 3D world. Starting as a small project and then eventually funded through the community through Kickstarter that raised up to $368 thousand dollars with nearly 5,000 backers, Artix Entertainment develops AQ3D as a full reimagining of the first game, detailed all within their Kickstarter and as someone who played that game all those years ago, it's been a real nostalgia trip playing this game. But obviously the ultimate question on most people's minds when they come to a video like this is, Adventure Quest 3D, is it any good? Is it worth playing? Let's talk about it. Adventure Quest 3D originally dropped into open beta testing back in October of 2016. Over the years, the game would jump onto other platforms, with it currently being available on Steam, PC, Mac, iOS, and Android. Artix's goal with the game was to make it playable with just about anything. This way, players would be able to play with each other, no matter their platform, except console, of course. Sorry, console players. Anyways, Adventure Quest 3D is a theme park MMORPG experience with a very light-hearted fantasy setting. The game plays like many other theme park-based MMORPGs currently, with many maps being instanced rather than the world being open-ended. But that sort of makes sense to the old-school Adventure Quest games, so it's not necessarily a negative. Creating a character will have you choose some minor customization to your character's look, like choosing male or female, skin tone, hair types, and a choice between the Warrior, Thief, and Mage classes. You can then choose between the three servers available, Red Dragon, Blue Dragon, and Yellow Dragon, with your character being able to be played on any server at any time, which is a very nice feature. Adventure Quest 3D's look takes a page out of early World of Warcraft days by having a somewhat cartoony look versus a realistic look, making the game really easy to play on on just about any sort of hardware you may have. You can customize a lot of settings, such as graphical settings, key bindings, user your interface, and various other small oddities, but it's nothing like the freedom that a mod would be able to give, which this game, as far as I know, does not support, which is completely fine since it's a very simple game to play. In terms of how simple Adventure Quest 3D is, it's probably one of the easiest MMORPGs out there. Combat involves only a few abilities that you are granted depending on your class and class rank. Your first attack is your standard auto attack, with your secondary, third, and fourth abilities earned from leveling your class rank. Your fifth ability is your class ultimate, which is gained from attacking enemies over time. Your sixth attack is earned from specifically mastering a class, which gives incentive to fully rank up each class to have a pool of different attacks to choose from. Speaking of all of these abilities and classes, let's talk about the class system in Adventure Quest 3D. Adventure Quest in general has always sported a somewhat unique but simple class system ever since the original back in 2002. Each class has an individual level that can be ranked up to a maximum of 10, with each rank rewarding either a new skill or a passive bonus to your character when that class is equipped. Currently, AQ3D has a total of 11 classes. The Warrior, Mage, Rogue, 
Guardian, Paladin, Moglomancer, Pirate, Ninja, Necromancer, Dragon Slayer, and the newly released Berserker. Each class plays pretty differently, whether it be their gimmicks such as the rogue stacking poisons, or having a specific resource they use, such as mana. However, the class system in Adventure Quest has never unfortunately been truly deep with customization. Sure, there are a lot to choose from, but once you master that class, the only customization you have within that class choice is your cross-class skill that you pull from another mastered class in AQ3D. There is no talent points or different subclasses to choose from here, at least at the moment, which may disappoint some players who want a bit of depth to customization. Besides classes and abilities, you also have your own separate character level, which determines what enemies you can fight, what quests you can play, and what equipment you can wear, and overall how powerful you are. Currently the max level in AQ3D is 29, with the idea that the game will add more content and eventually increase the cap level as time goes on. When you level your character, your maximum stats increase and you are awarded with a newly introduced feature in the form of chests. More on that later. Equipment in AQ3D works a bit differently than most MMORPGs out there. The idea is that each area you visit has a set of craftable items that you can equip to make your character more powerful. Your character, however, doesn't actually craft the items, but rather you gather the materials required for whatever item and you bring them to a vendor who will then craft it for you, which then waits on a timer to be able to claim it. This system works very similar to Warframe, in which any item you craft will be set on a timer unless you pay the premium currency to claim it right then and there. In terms of equipment customization, there isn't much here either. Most equipment breaks down into a couple of different types for a somewhat pseudo role you may be trying to go for depending on your class choice. Armors will tend to favor specific stats, which sort of gives you a choice and build for what you are trying to play. For instance, if you wanted to be a more tanky player, you may favor armor and weapons that specifically give you higher armor and health to help you survive. While the system is not necessarily deep by any means, it is nice that there is some differences in armor choices. To further elaborate on gameplay for the most part, your time in AQ3D will be spent completing the story quests within each area. The dialogue and cutscenes are really simple and comedic, which make each new interactions with NPCs fun to watch, especially when things break the fourth wall. I wish I could say that the quests themselves were just as fun as the dialogue and cutscenes, however. Most of the quests you experience while adventuring will really just be different flavors of the generic quests you will see in other games. Kill X creature five times, gather Y items 10 times, go to this spot and interact with Z thing. There are some different quests that are thrown in every now and then to shake up the monotony of things, but man, this is a real drawback to AQ3D's gameplay. One quest type I did find enjoyable was the solo challenges you can find in the maps you explore. Whenever you come across a giant book you can interact with, this is considered a solo challenge you can attempt. The solo challenges usually reward some good equipment in your area, as well as a title, so it's definitely worth completing them whenever you come across them them, but they are more difficult than most things within that area. It's just a shame that there isn't more diverse quest types within AQ3D, such as jump puzzles, and it's a real annoyance when you see that quests more or less repeat themselves before you are done within an area. For instance, in the graveyard area I was in, the quests would ask me to kill skeletons, and then literally three quests later would have me kill more skeletons again. It's a bit weird to do the same several things within an area just to complete it. Luckily, there is group content within AQ3D to experience. In addition to solo challenges, there are some group challenges as well that you can attempt with random players or your friends, as well as a large amount of different dungeons within the game. As stated, challenges usually give some equipment as rewards as well as a title, while dungeons are randomly generated to a small extent with different small challenges you complete within them. Dungeons reward materials that are used for crafting within that area that you are in, as well as having a small chance to spawn chests that you can open for items, such as healing potions, as well as cosmetic fashion items. Holy cow, I guess now it's time to talk about the game's transmog system, huh? I can't believe I've been holding that off until now. Pretty much every single piece of equipment you've come across can be used as a fashion item to customize how your character looks. There are literally what seems like thousands of items that you can obtain to fully customize your character's look, so if you really like the way a low-level sword looks, then don't get rid of it. Just equip it as a cosmetic item and you can keep it forever. The drawback to this 
this system, however, is that you do have to have the item within your inventory or bank to readily have access to them. I am hoping that they consolidate all of their cosmetics and items into a collection system similar to what they did for their pets and travel forms, since those were recently moved into their own menu, so you can collect as many pets and travel forms as you want without cluttering your inventory. Next, let's talk about PvP. While AQ3D has been a more PvE experience from what I played, the game is introducing some PvP features. In fact, during the making of this video, Artix actually posted on the website that PvP is coming next month. Currently, you can duel any player you come across to test out your class or to just practice PvP. The PvP that is currently in development, from what I read, is really exciting. The developers have stated that even though PvE is something that most players will want to enjoy, there is a PvP audience for MMOs, and that it will be completely optional to take part in. They plan to roll out PvP in phases, so it's really exciting to see that they are catering to both audiences in a very smart way. The last couple things I want to talk about is overall feel of the game, and finally the cash shop. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, the game has a cartoony graphic style that should be able to be run on just about any hardware. The art style is very colorful, with areas having a very different feel to them to set them apart from one another. However, the game is severely lacking in the music department, with many tracks being recycled in different areas or the music itself just being sort of boring to be honest. The game, in my opinion, kind of plays better if you listen to your own music while playing, like Breaking Benjamin. So obviously I mentioned that because of one of the things that Adventure Quest 3D gets right, is its events. Currently, there is an event going on right now where you play within a battle concert listening to Breaking Benjamin. Yeah, like the actual band and even real songs from them play. I'm not sure if Benjamin Burnley is the actual voice actor for the guy that talks during the concert, but it's really funny and it seems like most of the game's events are incredibly fun to experience. Just about everything I've talked about in the game from classes, crafting, events, and cosmetics all tie into the game's cash shop as well. Adventure Quest 3D is a fully free-to-play game with just about about everything in the game being earnable through gameplay. There is a one-time membership upgrade you can purchase for either 20 bucks or the ultimate package for 50. The upgrade packages, especially the 20, is exceptionally worth it considering it gets you a new class, some premium currency, and access to the Guardian-only tower and content. Cash shop-wise, like I stated, just about everything in the game can be paid for with Dragon Crystals. Classes normally take about 10 days to earn, or you can outright purchase them with Dragon Crystals. Certain cosmetics can only be purchased with Dragon Crystals, certain pets and travel forms can only be bought with them, and obviously things like bank space and crafting time. There are loot boxes in the game in the form of the chests I mentioned earlier. You earn once per day by logging in, and once every time you level up. The lowest tier chest is usually the one you will always be earning, with every week's worth of logging in being the secondary tier, and then if you logged in every day during that month, being the final tier chest. You can also buy the chests with dragon crystals, but it's really not all that worth it in my opinion. Out of all the games I've played, this loot box system is probably the best I've seen, since literally everything in the loot chests are cosmetic, and any duplicates you get or items you don't want can be traded in for a third currency, which can then be spent on any item you want in particular. Although I will say some of the better looking things are really expensive, but it's still all just cosmetic that you don't need. In my opinion, these aren't really all that bad, except for maybe the Guardian class being exclusive, but for 20 bucks, and honestly a not that great class, I'd say it's worth it, or if you really want to, it's definitely skippable. Just keep in mind, a lot of other MMORPGs out there are doing much worse to get you to spend money. Okay, last topic for real. Let's talk about AQ3D's endgame. From what I've read, there isn't really an endgame for AQ3D. Once you hit level cap, which can admittedly take some time to do, the next thing would be to get the best weapon and armor in the game. Everything I've seen from other players indicate it's sort of an annoyance to do. Since Adventure Quest 3D is constantly updating, the current best gear may take hours to farm and then get replaced by something when new content releases. To an extent, I can see the frustration, especially if it does take a long time to get that gear, but most MMORPGs will have you replacing top-end gear whenever new content comes out. It all depends on the frequency of the new content. Anyways, Endgame will usually just consist of a top-end dungeon to farm that isn't necessarily difficult until maybe the boss. Some people agree that the game is 
is just too easy when it comes to challenge, so some even opt to skip in-game farming for gear since things are just too easy anyways, in most cases, except for certain bosses. Now would also be a good time to bring up that AQ3D is constantly updating with something new every week. Whether it's events or new content, expect nearly weekly updates since the game is still technically considered open beta even after four years. Artix Entertainment has always kind of done that. They announce and work on a project, it sits in beta for years before they release it or don't release it depending on its success. While AQ3D does seem to be their golden goose, I wouldn't necessarily be surprised if they started working on some other 3D game in a couple years. I guess I can't complain too much with how often it is updated though. Anyways, let's get to final thoughts. Adventure Quest 3D is fully free to play, no strings attached at all. You can get to the max level, you can earn just about every class, you can play any dungeon. Obviously, there is some slight restrictions, but there is tons of stuff to do as a free player. The game is very easy to run on just about any computer or phone with its cartoony graphics. If you want a friend to play with you, it shouldn't require anything major to get them started, besides, you know, trying to convince them to play the game. The game is very casual with its content. Nothing will really demand any sort of intense time out of you, which can be a good thing if you're looking to spend only an hour or two here and there, and then move on to something else. Art6 has been somewhat known to provide a comical experience in their game, and 3D is no different. Expect much of the storylines and dialogue to never take itself seriously. The creators know that this is a video game, and they take full advantage of that. The game has a slew of updates coming to it just about every week, which which is great if you always want something new to do. They also have a roadmap of the content they plan to work on this year on their website, so they definitely plan to support this game for years to come. Lastly, the game has a great fashion system, implemented that allows you to customize your character looks to a great level. Any armor, any weapon you find, can be equipped to make your character look however you want them to look. Unfortunately, since 3D is going for a more casual, friendly vibe, it is hard to find a hardcore mindset within this game. Sure, there is definitely a grindy endgame with the gear, getting all classes to max, and leveling to max level, but there isn't really much that will keep you hooked into the game for hours and hours on end. If you are looking for a more serious tone game, 3D isn't really going to be that for you, since they constantly are throwing jokes to the player. While I find that charming and refreshing, some may find it more on the annoying side. Quests are pretty mindless in this game. Expect to do the same monotonous quests over and over while you are leveling to cap level, or just outright getting bored with them. 3D unfortunately doesn't have a lot of in-depth customization when it comes to its gameplay. Everything is very simple, and it's made to be that way. If you're looking for a game that really lets you tweak your character on how you play, 3D might not be the game for you. If you like ambient thematic music while playing your game, sorry, but 3D doesn't really deliver on that front. Until they really compose some better tunes for the game, expect to be playing your own music. While the player base is actually pretty healthy in this game, don't expect a lot of players to really talk too much. Most of the players that you will come across are most likely playing on a phone or tablet and will opt out of talking, so a lot of dungeons end up being very quiet. Lastly, the game doesn't have a lot of features that should be here. Things like proper balance, guilds, professions, proper crafting, essentially things that you would find in most MMORPGs are either not here because of developmental vision or are just not implemented yet. Obviously in the future, there could be some changes to the current game, but that's how it is currently. And those are my thoughts on Adventure Quest 3D. Do you play AQ3D? Were you thinking about playing? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm curious to see what everyone has to say. As always, if you liked the video, please do me a solid and like the video, as well as subscribe to the channel for more content. Trust me, all the support you guys and gals give me truly helps, so I really appreciate it. Next is my social media links like Discord and Twitter, which are in the description, so go follow those if you want to follow me on those platforms. Lastly, like I do in every video, I want to give thanks to my loyal supporters, as well as giving a shout out to a player I've met in this game. Thanks for playing with me, man. Anyways, that is all for this video, and I will see you in the next one.